Hi there. Let's take a few minutes and talk about question 15.9. This is an actual study and the result surprises me. I've used this question before. It still surprises me. So we're looking at the amount of time on average that young children spend at the lunch table and how many calories on average they consume at lunch. The relationship is not at all what I thought it would be. So the first thing you're asked to do is to make a scatter plot of the data and then find the equation of the least squares line for making a calorie prediction from lunch table time. So here is my window. I entered the data into list one and list two. So these are the minimums and maximums that I chose for X and Y by using the two variable statistics command. So again, if you go into your stat plots, you want to turn on plot one. Here is the scatter plot option for list one and list two. I've already set my window, so here's my graph. And what surprises me here is it looks like the direction of the relationship is negative. So for additional time spent at the table, the number of calories actually consumed is dropping. So maybe the really hungry kids get to the table first, they eat really fast and they're done, and the kids that aren't as hungry just sort of sit there and linger and nibble. I'm not sure exactly what, uh, this is not what I expected. So let's calculate then, well, first of all, before we do that, let's describe the relationship. Uh, the direction is negative. The form is moderately linear. I could see fitting a best fit line in there. Uh, it's a moderately strong relationship. We'll be able to measure that once we actually calculate the linear regression because we can measure that with the correlation. So to actually run the linear regression, if I hit the stack command, I'll go to calculate. So I'm going to go ahead and use this option. You could use either of the linear regression options, but this option matches the study guide. So your constant is being called A and the slope is being called B. A little hint here. So you can actually tell the calculator to store your regression equation. I'm going to hit variables and Y variables. I'm going to have the calculator go ahead and store it into Y1 so we can graph it pretty quickly. So notice the relationship as indicated by the correlation is negative. It's moderately strong. The correlation is 65, uh, negative 0.65. So squaring that correlation, remember, is the way that you make R squared. So this 0.42 is indicating that 42%, 42% of the variability in the number of calories consumed is explained by the linear regression on the amount of time that the children are at the lunch table. So let's go ahead then and look at the scatter plot with the linear regression line. There we go. So, and then you're asked to describe briefly what the data show about the behavior of children. So truly by a brief description, that's exactly what we mean. So here was my work, if you will, for 15.9. So when I wrote the regression equation, I wrote it in terms of y hat. That is the estimated number of calories consumed. Here is the intercept. Notice here the intercept wouldn't have a reasonable interpretation. If x is zero, if there's no time spent at the table, this suggests that the students would consume 560.7 calories. That really doesn't make sense. It's the slope that we're really interested in. x is the average uh, time at the table in minutes, and y is the average number of calories consumed at lunch. So the bottom line then, the first part of the question is asking you to look at the scatter plot, look at the linear regression, and make a quick observation about what this says. So here's what I wrote, and as I've already said, it still surprises me. The longer on average the child is at the table, fewer calories on average are consumed. So I went ahead and specifically interpreted the slope. So for every additional minute of table time, so that's for every increase of one unit in the explanatory variable. Approximately three fewer calories are consumed. The response variable decreases by three, and that decrease is indicated by the sign on the slope. So the next part of this question then asks you to construct and interpret the 95% confidence interval. I'm gonna do that in another video because I wanna take a little time to talk about the conditions build the confidence interval on the calculator and then interpret it in context.